Thank you, Andreas, for coming over. And I really like your speech and, and all your conference that you do. I really would like to ask about uh, the power of mining centralization in, let's say, a couple of countries. What do you think? And although Bitcoin looks like anti-fragile, uh, how do you foresee that we are going to pass or go through that mining centralization power? That's a very, very good question. So for those of you who are technically minded or have been following the Bitcoin space, one of the characteristics of Bitcoin from the first white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto was the idea that Bitcoin decentralizes power by giving one CPU one vote. The idea being that by contributing processing power to the network, you become part of the decision-making process. Something interesting happened, though, because the incentives, once it started taking off, were so powerful that people started investing in more complicated computing. And soon, it wasn't CPUs, but GPUs, graphical processing units, that were used to mine Bitcoin. And that represented a 100 times improvement in the ability to mine. Think of it as one GPU, a hundred votes. Um, and very soon, from GPUs, we went to FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays, which are systems of silicone where you can encode an algorithm and run it really fast. And then we went to ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits, which are basically mining chips designed to do nothing but mining. In each one of these steps we saw somewhere between a hundred and ten thousand fold increase in performance over the previous generation. And that is the primary reason why it caused enormous centralization in mining. However, that game is now over. If you were a miner who migrated to ASICs, then migrating to a system that was printed um, with a silicon fabrication system at 24 nanometers gave you an advantage of 10,000 times over the previous generation and You could buy those chips by making a very big order with a semiconductor factory Which means that only very few could put up the necessary capital and if you could then take that down to 22 nanometers using a more specialized silicon fabrication system you could get another massive improvement. So we saw mining hardware evolving every three to six months. Literally, if you set up a warehouse full of mining equipment, it had a shelf life of less than six months. In six months, it went from the most powerful, most profitable system of mining to being unprofitable for the level of electricity it consumed. And so that created even more centralization because now the ability to put down more capital every three to six months to get rapid delivery to be closely connected to silicon fabrication centralized mining. And it centralized mining a lot in China, primarily because that's where the silicon fabrication is, and there's also some great opportunities for cheap energy. I don't think that was the vision of Satoshi. Now, I will caution you one thing. A lot of the concern about Chinese mining, in my opinion, is blatantly racist. If mining had centralized in Sweden, we wouldn't be getting so upset. Right? So just keep that in mind, because Chinese mining represents excellence in engineering, concentration of resources in engineering, and so far the ability to deliver massive amounts of security and trust for the Bitcoin network at very low cost because of the cost of electricity. That is something we all benefit from. But here's where it gets interesting. As of six months ago, we started seeing the fabrication of ASICs at 16 nanometers. 16 nanometer technology is the cutting edge of computer processing. It's what you see in your latest Apple hardware device. And the exponential growth of performance now hits a wall, because there is nothing better than 16 nanometer technology. In computer terms, we have this law called Moore's Law. And Moore's Law, uh, posited by Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel in the 70s, is the idea that 
every two years, approximately, computer capacity doubles. And we've been running ahead of Moore's Law, and in fact, it's been doubling uh, in less than 18 months. That sounds really fast, doesn't it? Unless, of course, you've spent the last five years doing a thousand times faster every six months, and suddenly you're down to twice as fast in two years. That's a wall of performance. That means that once you put those 60 nanometer things on the shelf, they're going to sit there for two years, and you don't have the ability to upgrade them. And that now means that the advantage shifts from the economic power of those connected to silicon fabrication to the ability to deliver these devices as consumer devices. Because with the centralization of mining comes one big disadvantage. If you have a thousand terahashes in a warehouse, what happens when the warehouse burns down? What happens when you lose electricity to the warehouse? What happens when you lose cooling to the warehouse? What happens when you have a problem with your investors? The centralization now makes you vulnerable to losing everything. Compare that to the possibility of having a mining chip that's part of a toaster or a water heater that's plugged into your kitchen wall. Well, if you have Instead of one system that produces a thousand terahashes, you have a million systems producing one millionth of that. They're less vulnerable to disruption, because if the power goes out in a whole city, it only affects a small percentage of the devices out there. And it may be unprofitable for now for us in the developing world, but in some places in the world, it's going to become profitable to mine on the latest chips using solar energy and hydroelectric power and renewable sources that are less expensive. Which means that, in my opinion, mining centralization reached its peak in 2015. We're going to see now, it's probably going to continue the wave for another year or so. And in July 22nd, 2016, we have an important event. The reward for Bitcoin blocks is divided by two, half the amount of reward. I think what that will do is it will ensure that anyone who is not mining on the very latest 16 nanometer chips becomes unprofitable and then we have a level playing field. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, first of all, because we still have great security and mining centralization hasn't led to any of the nightmare scenarios that we have imagined in Bitcoin. And secondly, because I think it was an artifact of the race of technology to Moore's law and now we're done. So again, that was a long explanation. I apologize because it's a very technical topic. Thank you for the question.